My name is Ross Gattel. I'm Chancellor of the Community College System of New Hampshire and very proud to be here and honored to be here and proud to be a board member of the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation. What a powerful story and what a powerful person. Alex, we are so proud of what you have done and now your pathway, graduating high school, walking across the street and particularly as an educator, to go on to college and to be on the pathway you are on. We're all very proud of you. And it gives us optimism as we look towards the future on how we could make sure that our young people have pathways, pathways of optimism, pathways where they could see a life of not only economic opportunity, but an opportunity to contribute to their state and be role models for others. And that's what you have done for us. You are a role model for the work that we do. Part of our work, part of my work at the Community College System of New Hampshire and part of our focused activities at the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation is putting young people on pathways to success. And part of putting them on that pathways is at an early age, particularly when we think about the middle school age and Alex's experience at the middle school age, is what type of exposure to opportunities, what kind of education, and training are they getting at that critical stage of their life. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics could be very exciting and very rewarding and put young people on a pathways to good careers and good opportunities. By putting young people on a STEM pathway and supporting them on the STEM pathway, we are also contributing to a very strong economic future for the state of New Hampshire. We all know New Hampshire's demographics and workforce needs are changing. With these changes, many New Hampshire employers are having difficulty finding qualified workers, especially in science and technology fields where demand right now outpaces graduates. Over the previous decades, New Hampshire's skilled technical engineering and IT workforce has been supplied in large part by people moving into the state by in-migration and a large population of baby boomers. Recent New Hampshire and broader demographic shifts have changed this. With in-migration reduced and baby boomers headed towards retirement, New Hampshire will need to invest in its skilled workforce pipeline. The state currently ranks 49th out of 50 states in graduates with STEM credentials relative to the number of STEM workers. This has created significant workforce gaps in such fields as information technology, computer science, and advanced manufacturing. And we're going to see a video about advanced manufacturing. Investment in STEM education and training is very important to support individual achievement advance economic opportunity, and to ensure employment that pays well. All very important. And by investing in our young people through STEM education, we can ensure that New Hampshire has a strong economic future. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Gattel. And also, thank you for your leadership on the governor's new STEM task force. We look forward to seeing the results of that work by you and other leaders in STEM on the state. In this changing environment, changing workforce needs, rising student debt that we've described, the foundation is the largest provider of scholarships to, that are publicly available to youth in New Hampshire, thanks to the generosity of our donors and so many of you here with us tonight. And in this, amidst these changes, we went to employers and educators and brought folks together and said, how can we make sure we're getting the greatest impact out of these scholarship dollars in these times? How can we support the workforce needs and our communities through that? And the answer was very clear. We need more support for STEM studies. We need smarter and more streamlined pathways to jobs. And we need 
a better understanding of the whole picture of how we develop STEM talent in this state. So the foundation turned to its donors. And the first thing we did was increase scholarship funding for STEM studies by 85%, granting out scholarships from donors. Some gave 50,000, some gave 2,000, and collectively we granted out 695,000 to nearly 300 of the most promising STEM students in New Hampshire. And we thank you all for stepping up to help us meet that need. In addition, we were able to turn to donors and together brought in national experts to help us look at the STEM talent pipeline in New Hampshire. And people, the Education First out of Ohio had worked in other states who had increased their competitiveness in STEM fields, came to New Hampshire and analyzed our workforce development in the STEM fields. And we now have got that study guided by a group of education and business leaders in New Hampshire has given us a picture of the overall talent development. We have a searchable database of the nearly 700 STEM programs across the state that local employers and partners can use. And we have also a collective understanding of what our challenges are, where the gaps are, and recommendations to strengthen talent development that was endorsed unanimously by a, the group of leaders from business and education that guided that study. Finally, that strength of that work attracted national attention. We just learned this week that the Lumina Foundation will be contributing to New Hampshire over the next three years and supporting efforts for employers and educators to work together to build those smarter, stronger pathways. What are the courses kids need to, need to take when? What is the guidance they need? What is that pathway to a good job for them and their parents? And that will be work we'll be undertaking starting this month. So we thank our donors. We thank all of you and our partners and leaders in the state working on this with us. We want to highlight one of the most innovative aspects of this work is the local partnerships between employers and educators um, that have started up and sprung up across the state. This is happening up north in Hypertherm, uh, led by Barbara and Dick Couch. It's happening here in Manchester at Dine. And we're going to share one example with you from Charlestown, New Hampshire. And you'll see what happens when a local manufacturer hires a retired school superintendent to bring education and kids into their workforce. So let's roll the video. Thank you. Most manufacturers in New Hampshire, at least, are having trouble finding skilled people. We do not have people that understand or even want to get into manufacturing because they don't know it. So I thought, well, maybe we should begin to expose young people to what we have to offer in manufacturing. You're gonna have to rerun tool two. If you want to take a look at the step right in there. Yeah. The importance of machine tool programs, engineering programs, and an introduction to manufacturing program, which is a partnership with Whelan where they get on site, it's critically important because the students need to get interested in this. They learn how to use the math, science, engineering, and technology in a hands-on basis. They learn why math is used by working both in the pre-engineering program that I teach and the machine tool program that I teach. But going out to Whelan adds yet an added dimension to this, is that they see it on site in the real world and taught to them by people who do this every day, who use those skills every day. You work in different departments and see how it is in the real world, how to work as a machinist or as a, an employee. We have people who assemble parts. We have people who, all the way up to doctor's degrees, who design parts, who design tooling, we show them where the applications of engineering and science actually take place. Really, you get to learn it yourself and figure out what works, what doesn't work, how to fix things on your own. I just have more experience learning all these new machines and new technologies in this work environment. So when I go out into the real world, I know what I'm doing and I feel like I have a good grasp on what is to come. We've got to reintroduce the opportunities that are here. The program that we have could be adapted very easily to any one of the major economic generators in the country. And it's whatever is customary in their area. Education all 
wraps into one thing, and that's building opportunity.